In this video, we are going to have a look at the basics of the booking chart. The booking chart is a place where you can see what is available, make bookings, move reservations around, and much, much more. There are several different ways to access the booking chart. On the top toolbar, you can click on the icon with the letter B for booking chart. You can also access the booking chart by using the F5 key on your keyboard. And you can also find it in the side menu under charts and booking chart. When the booking chart opens, it may open in the category view where you won't see any areas. Or with some categories and areas displayed or all categories and areas displayed. This is a personal setting and we will show you how to change this in another video. Your areas are grouped together under the category that they belong in. To view or hide the areas, you simply click on the category description to expand or collapse it. There are also the expand all and collapse all buttons that will expand or collapse all categories on the chart. Across the top of the chart, you will see the days of the week and each weekend is highlighted in a light gray color. The chart will always open up to today's date, but you can click on the calendar icon to change the dates here. Click on the word today to get back to today's date. In the middle, you will find the date range that is displayed and clicking on these arrows will take you backwards or forwards by 10 days. And click on today again to get back to today. Clicking on a specific day on the chart will also move that day to the first position on the chart. And again, click on today to get back to today. On the other side of the chart, these buttons here are the number of days that you want to view on the booking chart. The one day view will change the days across the top of the chart to an hourly view. This is commonly used for booking out areas like meeting rooms, tennis courts, boat hire, or anything else you may like to book out by the hour. Above this, we have a few icons and I will cover the most commonly used ones now and the others will be covered in other videos. The speech bubble icon will activate the data window, which will display information when you hold your mouse pointer over a reservation and other areas of the booking chart. When the data window is turned on, the icon is a different color. To turn the data window off, click on the icon once so that the icon goes back to black. The information icon will display the legend, which explains the many colors and symbols on the chart. Click on it again to hide the legend. We will cover this in more detail in future videos. As the booking chart does not automatically refresh incrementally, you can refresh it at any time with the refresh icon. If you want to close the chart, click here. These other icons we will come back to in another video. To make a reservation, Select an area and the arrival date on the booking chart. Left click on the mouse and drag across to the departure date. Let go of the mouse and select add reservation. In RMS, there are multiple ways to search for a reservation, guest, accounting and other information. To start with, we'll look at the reservation search fields found in the top right hand corner of your screen. This is not to be confused with the menu search, which will search for results in the RMS setup and function menu. This will be covered in another video. In this section, you are able to search for last names, first names, reservation numbers, and areas. We always recommend using a reservation number as this is a unique number and searching for this will take you straight to the reservation you are searching for. Simply type in the reservation number and hit enter. As there is only one match for this search, the matching reservation will open straight away. If you are searching for a surname and there is more than one reservation with the same surname, the reservation results will be displayed here in the full search window and your search query is shown here. Let's have a closer look at the search page. The search page is broken down into three main sections. Down the left hand side, you have your search criteria. In the middle of the page, 
so you have your search results. And at the top right hand side, you have your actions. Many of the functions in RMS have the same screen layout, so you'll quickly become familiar with this. Starting down the left hand side, the search by is where you select what it is that you're searching for. The first six items are the most commonly used search for items. If you scroll down, you'll find there is a whole list of other items that you're able to search for within a reservation. Beneath this is the reservation status filter. The reservation status is important as there are a few statuses that are always ticked by default, which may result in you not finding what you're looking for. By default, RMS will only search for current and future reservations, and the statuses that will show this are ticked by default. If you are looking for a reservation in the past, you'll need to tick Departed to search for departed reservations. Even then, if you are looking for a common name like Smith, you may wish to filter the search results down to a date range. This will make it a lot easier to find the reservations that you are after. There are a few different status options and we'll cover these in different videos. In the results section, there is a lot of information available to you and you are able to see this by using the scroll bar across the bottom of the screen, or by using the left and right arrows on your keyboard. If the reservation that you are looking for is displayed in the result window, simply double click on it anywhere in the reservation to view it. Coming back to the quick search, you are also able to find a reservation on the booking chart. If there is only one result for the search, like searching for a unique reservation number, clicking on the chart icon will take you to the booking chart and highlight the reservation in yellow. There are a few other ways to access the search menus in RMS. If you have the icon view on your top toolbar, the reservation search is indicated by the magnifying glass icon. You can also find the same search options in the side menu under reservations. Finally. There is another way to search for reservations and that's via the in-out movement screen, but we'll come back to this in another video. We are going to go through the basics of the reservation account screen. To start with, RMS can have up to 5 different accounts and they are found at the bottom of the accounts column. You may have all 5 displayed, or you may only have 1 or 2 accounts. These accounts can also be relabeled so they may look different on your screen but they are still found in the same location. Next to the account label is a balance of the related account. Clicking on the underlined account label will open up that account. All accounts are visible from the same account screen, and the account label that you selected from the reservation screen will be highlighted in yellow. If you want to view another account, you can click on the related tab here. Let's have a quick look at the layout on the account screen. Across the top of the screen is some basic information about this account. The reservation account number, which is always different to the reservation number. The name of the guest on the reservation. If your database is connected to more than one property, you'll see that listed here. And finally, the area that is booked. Beneath that is the details of who's responsible for this account. We'll discuss this in another video. Beneath that again, you'll find the account statement, which is an itemized list of charges and payments for this reservation. On the account statement, you'll see the date of the charge or payment, the description, the GST amount if applicable, the amount for the charge, credit or payment, and a running balance of the account. You may notice that charges for future reservations are dated as of the arrival date of the booking. Whereas any deposits are dated as of the date the payment was actually taken. When you create a reservation, the charge for accommodation may post automatically when the reservation is saved. If the accommodation is not posted automatically, it will be automatically charged when the reservation is checked in. Let's have a look at some basic functionality on a different account. If you want to charge the guest for anything other than accommodation, we go to Sundry Charge. On this page, you can see a list of charges that have been marked as favourites. This is not the full list of charges that are available, just the ones that have been selected as the most commonly used or favourites. For a full list of charges, click on the drop down arrow in the description field, or start typing in what you're looking for, and hit enter. If there is a unit price for the sundry charge that was selected, it will show here. If there is no price, you are able to type in the price that you wish to charge. And here you can add the quantity to automatically calculate the total charge. 
You can also add a comment to the charge if you like, here. These other two fields we'll come back to later. If you have more charges to post, you can use Apply and Next. Otherwise, if you're finished, just click Apply and Exit to post this charge and close the window. You can now see your new charge on the account. Now, to make a payment on the account, click on the Receipt button. The first section of the screen is how you're going to take the payment. What you have selected here will change what is displayed in the middle of the screen. And on the bottom is a list of the accounts and their outstanding balance. When making a payment, firstly you select the relevant payment method. You may not have all these payment methods, or you may have different ones on your screen, but they are all very similar. The amount that you are going to receipt is automatically populated here as the balance of the related account but you are able to manually type over this if you want to make a different payment. When it comes to credit and debit card payments, there are several options available to us depending on what products you are using. There are some other receipt options that you may have if you are connected to a payment gateway. Processing a credit card through a payment gateway will process the transaction through RMS in the same way an FPOS terminal would. This is the same for an existing token. If the guest has a credit card associated with their profile, the credit card information will have been tokenized through the payment gateway, meaning that you are not able to see the credit card information, but you are still able to process a payment for this card through RMS. To process a payment, you simply select the existing token with the last four digits of the card that you want to charge, and then process. This will then charge their card and record it on their account in RMS. We will discuss payment gateways in more detail in another video. Before we process any payments in RMS, you'll need to check your print options. There are several options here to choose from. Printing will print to your associated printer or thermal printer if you have one. Emailing will give you the option to send to any email address associated with the reservation, or even manually type in up to three ad hoc email addresses, both email and printer receipt at the same time, and you have the same options for an invoice as you do a receipt. If you have a thermal printer, you are able to use that here also. There is also the option to add a comment to the transaction if need be. When you have selected your print option, you can then process the receipt. It is worth noting that RMS will remember the print option that you have selected and will use this for the next receipt until it is changed again. The receipt is then posted on the account and you can see that it is displayed in green. And the associated transaction fee is automatically posted as well. The more you use the account screen, the more you will notice that some transactions have different colours. Black transactions are charges. Green transactions are receipts. Purple transactions are credits. Orange transactions are refundable. And information in blue are comments to the transactions above it. To close out of the account, click on Exit. Now that we have covered the basics of the account screen, let's look at some other common functionality. The next button across the top toolbar is the invoice button. There are times when a guest may ask for a tax invoice to be printed or emailed to them. When you click on tax invoice, the first options that you will see are the options to print, email or both. If you have RMS connected to a thermal printer, you can select that here also. In the invoice options, you can select to create a new invoice or if you want to reprint an existing invoice from this account. We will cover these options in another video. When you have selected your options, just click OK. If you have chosen to print the invoice, it will print to your default printer. Or, if you have chosen to email an invoice, you will see this screen where you can choose an email address associated with the reservation or type in an ad hoc email address. And then email and exit. The invoice has now been emailed to the selected email addresses. When you are printing the invoice, it may send automatically to the printer or it may display on your screen like this. Let's have a look at the invoice layout. The top section is your property information. Beneath that is the guest information and then the reservation information including the account number and reservation number. In the middle is the invoice number and transactions for the invoice. And on the bottom of the screen is the invoice notes. When an invoice is printed or emailed, an invoice number is automatically generated for the charges and receipts on the invoice. Moving on from invoices, if the guest simply wants a statement of their account, click on the first transaction of the account 
and then click on the Statement button. You will have the options to print or email this statement. A statement layout is similar to a receipt or invoice and is simply a list of transactions on the account. A quick tip when printing a statement is that it will only print from the transaction that you have highlighted in blue and the transactions that follow. If you have the last transaction highlighted, you will only see the last transaction on the statement. To report on all transactions, select the first transaction on the list before clicking on the statement button. From time to time, you may have made a mistake on an account, need to remove a charge from a reservation, accidentally added a digit to a receipt, or need to perform a refund. You are able to correct most of these mistakes under the correction button. For example, if you have created an invoice and then found that you have charged too much for an item, you are then able to cancel the tax invoice, void off the incorrect item, refund the difference, and create a new tax invoice. To do this, we would start by clicking on the incorrect charge, selecting corrections, and cancel invoice. Make sure that you are cancelling the correct invoice number from the account in the background. Once processed, you will notice that the invoice number has been removed from the transactions on the account. If you have posted an incorrect charge, click on the charge, then Corrections, and choose Void Charge. You will then be asked to select a reason as to why you are voiding off the charge, and then Void Transaction. The charge is then removed from the account. Now that we have voided off a charge that was once paid, the account is now in credit. We can refund this by selecting the corrections and refund. Select your refund method. This is the same function as performing a receipt, but using a refund. Select your print options, and if you want you can add a comment as to why you are performing a refund. Ensure the refund amount is correct, and then process. You can now see the refunded transaction, and the account has a zero balance. If you have incorrectly receipted a wrong amount or receipt type, click on the receipt so that it is highlighted in blue, click on Corrections, and Reverse Receipt. Select a reason as to why you are reversing the receipt, then Reverse Receipt. The receipt is then removed from the account, and you can now receipt it again correctly. It is worth noting that a receipt should only ever be reversed on the same day as it was receipted. This function is intended for corrections before the end of day or night audit is performed. Although you may not see your corrections on the account, everything is still recorded, but it is simply hidden from the default view. You are able to see all corrections by clicking on Corrections and Show Hide Voided. All voided transactions and reversals are displayed in grey. The accommodation charge is automatically generated when the reservation is saved or checked in. If you have voided off the accommodation charge for any reason, you are able to recreate it by clicking on Charges and Create Rate or Create Tariff. This will put the rate back onto the account. There are still a few functions that we have not covered, but these will be discussed in another video.